Why do I feel like I'm gonna get electrocuted? Because you might. <laughs> I think you gotta, let's wrap it first. Wrap it? Yeah, watch this. So that somebody doesn't trip over it and knock it out. What? Okay, here we go. Is it there? Or You're there? older, you've lived more life than me. It's not turning on. Maybe I put it in the wrong hole. All right, tell me if this works. I don't think you can put it in that hole. Are you in? Hey, no, but if I unplug this yellow one, where's it going? What? Don't unplug things. Okay, so. <gasps> Unwrap it. All right, plan B. Let me tell you a little story about a family of four. Mom's moving to, she's moving in next door. We're going to the country to enjoy the view. The only problem is, you know, they haven't got a clue. So they're calling on the dad to build the home. Trust me when I say they can't do this alone. She's a little fancy and he's afraid of snakes. We'll find out if they have what it takes. Yeah. A lot has happened over here, so let me catch you up. The house has been framed, the windows installed, and the exterior walls have been wrapped so that the stonework can start on the outside. But not everything's been running so smoothly. I wanna go out. No. Let's see how this is going. <laughs> they die. Oh. Not, I think some I of killed them. Killed the worm. Some of them survived. With power to the job site finally turned on, we were able to operate our well for the very first time. And let's just say living on well water is going to take some getting used to. You want to cancel the project right now? I mean, maybe. I can't shower in that. Between weather delays, missing plumbing parts, and a stain color I can't seem to nail down, and I'm not really thrilled with any of them. Sometimes this project feels like it's going off the rails. But I'm learning a lot, and I'm learning quickly. And with Builder Gary's help, I'm sure we can get this house back on track. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. <laughs> There's so much. <laughs> I do look tired. <laughs> no, I mean, I just see, I know you, I see in your eyes. Yeah, I know. Well, behind all this makeup is a cry for help. Still not sleeping very well. It's hard. You know, up until this point, we've been able to follow the plans and now it's like everything's falling on me. So there's so many decisions to be made. There's so much work to be done. There's so many little small details to keep in mind. And I just feel like I'm treading water and barely keeping my head above said water. Do I think that Leah was prepared for all the decisions that needed to be made? Probably not. If that was the case, then I would have had all the doors that go to the inside a long time ago. My dad is so helpful when it comes to all the technical stuff. He knows exactly what he's doing, but when it comes to design, he doesn't really, it's just like not his thing. So it's all on me. I'm really starting to think I just need to do these design meetings by myself because I've already heard twice that this one's bored, and you even said you're bored and we're not even there yet. My happiness is directly correlated to my guitar playing right now. It's very intense. And I want to learn some rock and roll. You and you want to learn, learn rock and roll? We're a family of rockers. Well, why did you agree to come with me? You, he, you know, he gets so irritated that he's not at these meetings or included in design decisions, and then as soon as we get in the car to go do design decisions, he's like, this is going to be three hours? I feel like you need some help, and I can't give it to you, so... You give me a lot of like moral support. You cheer me on. You can do it. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's important. I do. Yeah, I'm also bringing a mini fan. Mini fan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to play some rock and roll too. Listen, you said you wanted me to come. Lord help. I'm a team player. Even if I'm begrudgingly doing it. I'm a team player. I I'm not bringing you guys next time. I've been in the interior design field myself for about 10 years now, maybe even longer, and I could do this all day for somebody else. Pick out colors, fabrics, you name it, no problem. But when it comes to myself, I am my worst critic, and I know nothing. Turns out, I know nothing. I realized I needed some help, so I decided to reach out to Claire Zinniger, who is an interior designer that I have come to admire and totally fangirl over on Instagram. She has been redoing a house, I think, from the 19, early 1900s, and so she's really well-versed in all of the historical aspects that go into an old home. So I thought she would be perfect 
to bring on and help me bring this old farmhouse to life. I'm Claire Zinnaker and I'm an interior designer based mainly in Austin. I have been in business for seven years now on my own and I do residential and commercial design. I am helping Leah more than anything just affirming that she's got great taste because we all know she does but just kind of a sounding board. It is so overwhelming when it becomes a personal design project. I know myself and I'm just kind of helping her guide her through this process of getting this house to be beautiful. All right so this whole wall I want to do the limestone. Okay. So the whole, there will be like, no, that will be the backsplash. Whatever the exterior wall is, it'll be here? It'll be here. Okay. I think if you do plaster and it's smooth edges and you don't have any molding, it feels very Grecian yeah. or Spanish. So I do think that there's a way that if you combine the two, and the plaster isn't as much about the drama, it's just giving you some texture. Right. And then you apply moldings around everything. I think it is a good marriage of both. Okay, good. Yeah. Because I'm also going to fight with Builder Gary about this because he wants to texturize all the walls. Well, yeah. And he's like, orange, want... orange peel. Yes, yeah. orange peel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's like, we, don't worry, baby. It'll be like a really light uh, orange peel. And I'm like, no, 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 no. no. There'll be no, none of that. No. None of that. And I, he's, I, he goes, if we don't do smooth walls, I go, you're gonna, we're gonna learn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bringing Claire onto this project is going to be amazing because it's just so nice to have somebody to bounce ideas off of and be like, is, am I crazy? Like, do you like this? Like, I'm gonna rock the whole back wall. Do you think that's a good idea or not? You're gonna rock it. No, like, put more put rock stone. Out. Sometimes you just need that. You know, you need a little validation. You need a hype man. I need a hype man. You need a design hype man. That's it. There you go. Claire is my hype man. Honestly, I think that some of the best money you can spend doing a new build is hiring a designer because they're really going to help you see your vision through and help you to avoid any mistakes. So they can actually save you money in the long run. I like that. And hopefully now that Claire's on board, I can start sleeping again. No, I think so. this is going to be great. And you're allowed to just be like, no, that's horrible. Okay. Like at any, please tell me. Just be like, no, that's not what we're doing. No, stay in line. No, you know, just. <laughs> I feel like I might out. have to say that to Builder Gary more than you. Oh, he's fine. I'll deal with him. <laughs> he's he's a sweetheart. He really is. Yeah. And he's actually loving, I think, this process more than he lets on. Yeah. Right. I'm super excited to just get the walls up in the house so that Claire and I can start having a lot of fun on the interior selections. Twice a year, I get away to my very favorite place in the whole wide world. It is the Round Top Antiques Fair. Round Top covers 26 miles, thousands of vendors, and multiple, multiple venues. I love coming out here. They have something for everyone, whether it's high-end antiques or just digging around in a garage sale. I mean, it's basically the world's largest flea market. Builder Gary doesn't like it when I come out here because he's always worried about what I'm going to bring home. And you know what? He should be. Round Top is extra exciting this year because I'm getting to go and look for things that we can incorporate into the build. So I'm really looking for antique architectural pieces. So corables, old doors, cupolas, like different things that I can incorporate into this build to give it that authentic old farmhouse feel. Amazingly enough, Round Top is happening at the same time in the build that I really need to identify those items now. I got some really great pieces. Um, I got some incredible corables. I found our pantry door. But most importantly, I found the cupola. The cupola that I have been looking for and had envisioned, I found it. Right, I found this cupola and I think it'll work. What do you think? I think it's fabulous. Do you think it's too big? Uh, honey, go big or go home. What do you think? We're gonna be able to get it in the truck? I don't know. <laughs> This particular cupola, the old one that I found, was an old chicken vent. It came off of a chicken barn. Chicken coop? No, like a barn, like a real big barn. Uh -huh. And it's from Kansas, and it's probably about 80 years old. But basically it was an air vent to keep like barns cool in the olden days. But now cupolas are just like a decorative detail that they put on houses that really don't do anything. They just look cool. I've been told by my dad that I need to know what vintage things we're using in the house ASAP because we have to plan for them. So any vintage doors that we're using, we need to know the dimensions of them so that we can build the door jams and the framer can frame around them. So these details are so important and they're so important now. I think he's a little 
<laughs> irritated about it, but he'll be fine. When I hear the word vintage, I, I start giggling because it's nothing more to me than something that means it's old. It's probably dented, warped, and needs repair. And it probably cost way too much. Oh, that's pretty much a perfect fit, sir. How do I feel about vintage? Man, it's Levi's, 1970s, baby. I love vintage. I think the older, the better. It tells a story. There's a soul in it. I'm all for it, as long as it doesn't leak or break. This cupola is going to sit over your music studio, actually. It's gonna be amazing. What? Yeah, so did you look at the plans? The plans have the cupola on there, but they have like a new one that you could just buy. That's like... I don't know, I'm gonna have to talk to Gary about this. It's not, okay, all right, it's fine. Oh my goodness! What do you think? What is this? I love it, it's a, it's a cupola. It is... It's uh, a vent. Do you know that it has an opening right here for birds and squirrels to get into? See all this metal fatigue? There's holes all in it. Well, that's because it's old. <laughs> can, I, can I go back to that comment I made earlier about you work on design and I take care of function? Yes. This isn't functioning. But this is my design. Another really valid concern of my dad's is how much work anything that I drag home from the flea market is going to be to fix. So, um, you know, a lot of the things that I love have wear and tear and a great old patina to them, but are they actually going to stand the test of time when they're bolted to a ceiling? I don't know, <laughs> but it's going to look good. I guess we're going to find out. Correct. <laughs> okay. So this becomes your problem. I'm not putting this up there. Oh, it looks so cool. It looked like a UFO. Did you get little three, three little green aliens with it too? I just look at it from a, from a more of a critical standpoint. You, Leah looks at it from a design standpoint. I don't really have that vision. I'm more pra pragmatic. I look at it from a function and it, how it works and how it can be incorporated and have it gone in correctly the first time and not have to redo it over and over and over again. That's what I worry about. And I'm looking out for you, by the way. If you're going to be in here forever and ever, why put something up there that's only got about six days worth of life on it? Yeah, but it sat on a barn for like a hundred years. Who cares if the chicken gets wet? My job is to make it look cute. His job is to figure out how to make it work. All right. Can I just think about this for a minute? Like, I'm just not ready to give this up, so... Can you get your money back? No. Let's circle back. Why don't we make a fountain out of it? No. You know, like, Vegas, fountain, water coming out, you know, run a hose up here, flip that baby on, just sprinkle outside somewhere. Just an idea. They started the stonework on the front of the house and it is something that I have been so nervous about. All right, it's super early in the morning and we are at a stone yard in San Antonio. <laughs> um, it's a Saturday and I'm so tired. The goal of today is to finally select the limestone that is going on the house. Um, I feel like Goldilocks, like it can't be too white but don't want it too cream. Definitely no orange. Maybe a little bit of gray in it is okay to make it look weathered, but not too much gray. So it's like a little gray. Maverick. I'm also babysitting my sister's four month old puppy. Super chill. Go with that. Yes, it has occupied a lot of space and that pillow head of yours. Well, it's just, it's the most important detail of the house. When you pull up, this is what you see. It's all about this stone. And the idea was to do a German schmear, which is an old technique of smearing a lot of mortar on top of the limestone. So I was very particular with all the pictures. I had all my inspiration pictures ready to go to show the stonemasons and everyone has assured me that they know what I'm talking about and that we can achieve this old, cool look, but now I'm not so sure. Once these big decisions start actually happening, like the stone going up, the roof going on, the stain going up, you can't change these decisions. It's 
virtually impossible. So you better hope that you got it right. And I hope I got it right. I mean, I showed them so many pictures. When the stone goes on and the mortar is applied, it's very wet. And so the mortar looks really dark. And the first time I saw it, it scared me to death. I actually started crying. There's areas that get 100% shade. They don't get any sunlight. And for some reason here in Texas, we're not getting a lot of sunlight to begin with. I mean, we've got a lot of rain too, so you just gotta give it some time. It has been raining and raining and raining, which means that it could be months before the mortar dries and we have any clear idea of what it is actually gonna look like. And I've seen it happen before, where it looks like it's never gonna be right, and then one day you, you stop thinking about it. You walk right past it, you don't even think about it. And you know why? Because it took care of itself and you forgot about it because it doesn't jump out at you anymore. It just kind of goes away. I just needed some reassurance that when this thing does start drying, that it is going to dry the proper color. So mom and I took things into our own hands. Hi, how are you? Good. So it looks a lot better, the thickness. Talk to me about drying. Jesus said, bring a hair dryer. It's time to, to get the, the color, see? This is the mortar? Yeah. Oh, that's not bad, Leah. See, just take a breath. <laughs> Sweet it's Jesus, it's thank God. Yeah. So it's been about three days since we first started putting on the stone and we've come out every single day and hoping that it would be dry because Builder Gary said it would be dry in 24 hours and it just looks like a giraffe. And I'm freaking out. I know, but you need to stop freaking out and just take a breath. Yeah, but what if I completely messed up the stone choice and everything? Well, I guess you can have them take it down, start over again. I called Builder Gary freaking out about this and he pretty much said, too bad, this is what you chose. We got into a fight. I think he was supposed to be here today, but he's avoiding me. <laughs> and his plan of attack is to get a blow dryer. That's what he said. And blow dry the mortar so that we can get a better idea of the color it will be when it dries. I just want it to blend. And you would think that if I ordered cream limestone with a cream mortar, it would blend. That's the idea, that it just blends but it's not blending. Well, it's wet. I mean, that's what they're saying, it's wet. So let's go ahead and do what Builder Gary said, blow dry. So we're gonna try that. How many blondes does it take to plug in a hair dryer? Mom and I are up here with the hair dryer. Um, it's already lightened up How more about than that? it was. That's something I never thought I'd be bringing to a construction site, was a hair dryer. It's drying. And it's looking better. It is looking better, and I know you, you'll be back out here tonight, so. Should I leave it drying this whole time? I, well, will they leave it alone? <laughs> will they let it? It can't catch fire, can it? Okay. Well, I think that you're right, that it is starting to look better. Fingers crossed. I helped lay some stone, which was very yeah, cool. that was pretty cool. How's your, how, how's your manicure? Yeah, it's screwed. It's gonna be just fine, Mom. You didn't help. Well, hell no, because if I broke a nail, freaking ruin my week. Oh my God. I'm super concerned about this. <laughs> like, Again? Well, I, it's just, I have, a, I have a giraffe house right now. And I know it's gonna dry, but I'm, I'm seriously, like it keeps me up at night. Concrete takes a while for the chemical reaction to take place and the hardening to take place. And then once it hardens, and it starts to lighten and will become lighter. You are the expert. I've never done this before. You've been building homes for 48 years. What did the base shirt contractor tell you? It'll be fine, it'll be fine. There you go. But what if it's not fine? Well, then I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. The moisture has to leave the product. If it doesn't leave the product because there's a lot of humidity or a lot of rain, it rains on it and it saturates the whole stone all over again. And it just sits there and then, you know, a day later, two days later, it does it all over again. Nothing's gonna dry in that kind of condition. Well, it just keeps on raining and raining and raining. Um, 
This is a project that never ends because the rain won't let up long enough for us to make any real progress on anything, really. There's literally pools in this house. I will get this stone looking right if it is the last thing that I do on this house. If I have to paint it myself, I will. If we have to lime wash it, if we have to remortar it, I don't have the answers, but I'm meeting with the stone guy soon, so <laughs> we've got to figure it out. Next up, this week, we're supposed to get the shingles on. I've been talking about this now for a month, so I'm hoping this is the magic week. Once we get a roof on, we insulate on Friday, and that's not just a regular insulation, it's a foam insulation. And that all has to, to go in, and you can't have anything get wet. Once the foam gets in, which will take two or three days, and then they poly seal all around the doors and windows and get all the air tight, so the house is, is a sealed component, if you will. The sheetrock then goes up, and then the fun starts. Well, what do I mean by fun? The fun is, is when you start playing with, with interior trim, doors, cabinets, granite, colors. This is where Leah probably will shine. The exterior has got to get finished with that roof and try to put something. If we're going to put a cupola, we got to put the cupola up here now. Something other than the UFO. Overall, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh my God, I am. I mean, look, if the stone dries, then we'll be in good shape. But I guess we're just gonna have to wait three months to see. Ah, three months. I just wanna get in here now. I'm looking at my studio and I just wanna play guitar. <sighs> you have some time, babe. I think Leah's doing great. She is all about design and there is a lack of knowledge on her part about function. And so I'm trying to take what she wants to do with the design, and that is take a, a new house, place it on the property, and make it 100 years old. That is unique. Most people don't buy a new house and go, oh, by the way, can you make that look like it was back in 1990? No, it's usually a little bit different than that. So replicating that older look has added some nuance to the build, but she's, uh, She's managing fairly well in trying to be able to keep up with me. And I'm calling her every day, pushing her to do this, pushing her to do that. I, I, once she gets to the end of this process, she'll be able to do it all by herself next time. You're in the gravel pile. Do you you want, got, nope. Oh, he's now gotten deeper. Lawrence, the drywall contractor, is a character. Yeah, Lawrence. you're looking good, baby. Who's this? Lawrence, listen. And we stuck. I don't know that Builder Gary likes this idea. In fact, I know he doesn't like this idea. I hope to God this fits. Hey, Zeus. I'm in a world of hey, trouble Zeus. if it doesn't fit. It's stressful. I've never had to make so many decisions in my entire life. Let me tell you a little story about a family of four. Mom's moving too, she's moving in next door. We're going to the country to enjoy the view. The only problem is, you know, they haven't got a clue. So they're calling on the dad to build the home. Trust me when I say they can't do this alone. She's a little fancy and he's afraid of snakes. Find out if they have what it takes. Yes. Hey everybody, Builder Gary here. I want to talk to you about the exterior of a home. The facade of a home. Your street appeal. These are the things that are the number one thing people will see as they come around into the neighborhood or come to your home. The facade can be made up of brick or stone or stucco. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the selection that Leah made and a smear that she's putting on this stone. It's not a smear that, like you're used to hearing, that goes on a bagel. This is a smear because they smear it all over the stone. The stone that we picked 
for this house is a cream color stub, and the stucco is going to be a smooth finish. What Leah wanted to try to replicate is a home that looked like it was 100 years old. And so the way to get that look is to come in here with what we call a schmear. And some people call it a German schmear. And the schmear is when the joints are not clean and straight. They're not raked. They are, in a sense, sloppy. They have all of this bleed over of this mortar onto this stone. And it gives that old look, that old appeal to the facade of the home. So everybody, whenever you're doing any kind of construction, you know what I always say, if you're gonna build it, build it the right way.